Bitcoin is close to becoming worthless. Now, what's the Bitcoin? The Bitcoin's like rat poison. Yeah. Oh. The greatest scam in history. Let's get it. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you ungovernable misfits. I'm your host, Max. Everybody knows that Bitcoin is useless, worthless, and doomed to fail. But what if everyone's wrong? What if it's the system that is doomed to fail? Join me as I speak to some of the brightest people in the space and slither to the deepest, darkest depths of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Welcome back. I spoke to Antimus. You'll recognize him from our Bitcoin monthlies with Bitcoin Q&A. We discussed seed stamping and we got into the topic of multi-sig. Antimus has been working really closely with Seed Mint and also Seed Signer. It's really important that people take these things seriously and stamping your seeds into steel is a great start. As you listen to this, you will be able to go onto Vulcan21.com and you'll be able to see all the incredible tools available to make this easier for you. Before we start the show, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's been reaching out to me, buying the merch and also been using podcasting 2.0 apps. I really do appreciate all the support and if you find it useful, you find it enjoyable, please do share with your friends and family. I'd also like to say thank you to my show sponsors. Let's start with Foundation Devices. Foundation Devices recently won the J Stark Award at Guns and Bitcoin for the best Bitcoin hardware. They have an incredible team, really high quality products and a really simple, easy to use interface. You can use them for single SIG or multi SIG and if you want to check them out, go to foundationdevices.com and use the code bit by bit to get $10 off your purchase. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me before you order. Next up, staying on the theme of multi-sig, we have CASA. CASA make it so simple for anybody to have multi-sig. We go through some of the different procedures in the podcast today of how to do this yourself. But if you are a fuckwit like me and you either have too much to do or you don't fully trust yourself, you can have a two of three with CASA. They can hold one key in case you were to lose one, stamp it wrong, lose a hardware wallet, anything like that, you always know that they're there to hold your hand. You can do this from as little as $10 a month and you can also get an additional 10% off if you use the code bit by bit 10 go to keys.casa and check them out and if you have any questions at all you can reach out to me and i'll be happy to help and finally there's no point in having multi-sig or seeds or stamps or anything else if you do not have the sats in the first place now many of you plebs will be mining or stacking no kyc but if you want to get your hands on some sats or you are new listening to this, you can go to fastbitcoins.com. They make it so simple to buy Bitcoin. They have an amazing team and although they have to take your KYC data, they do everything they can to keep you safe and secure and they also make sure that you take those sats off exchange as soon as possible. Check them out at fastbitcoins.com and you can always reach out to me if you want to understand the trade-offs or you want any more information before you purchase. Enjoy the show. Hey mate. Back again. (laughs) Third time's a charm. Okay, this is sounding better. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, so it's nice to have you back on. I see you've been a very, very busy boy. Yeah, it's been it's been good times. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, to do list is getting longer, but it's 
pretty amazing. All the collaboration and all the people who suddenly get in contact with and, and the productivity coming out of all of it. Something to dive in today, um, but it's been absolutely amazing. And what about Nick? He's just doing fuck all with his feet up, is he? <laughs> no, man, he is, he's a beast. I mean, like every free second he has, he's, uh, <laughs> he's running after some idea he has. Um, such a creative dude um, and a real drive to get things done. So It's a match made in heaven. It's really cool <laughs> to see you guys working and then also so closely with Seed Signer as well. And yeah, just so much creativity going on at the moment and making really cool stuff. So we'll kind of dive straight in if that's all right with you. Sure. Because obviously... I haven't really had an update from you guys since we last chatted. I've seen what's happening sort of through Twitter and the odd conversation we've had, but obviously you've got Seedmin and now you've got this new Vulcan website, which looks really interesting. And I hear snippets, but it'd be really cool to hear like, what's this process been like? Because I know you've been pouring loads of time into it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, just um, to recap quickly, I mean, it was about a year ago that I started uh, or reached out to Nick. Um, At the time, I was just looking for something to contribute um, with like a mechanical engineering background and something like um, be able to do something in the space. And uh, obviously with everything being so geared towards uh, coding um, and like software development, um, it's pretty difficult. And then I saw Nick posted uh, his work on the Seedmint and um, that was just fascinating to see. So I reached out and that um, kicked off and went really fast from there and uh, set up the first production, um, like pre-production set of 27 that we sold out that was great and um so we've been working on a few improvements for the seedment itself uh but then nick i mean we both have been using seed signer pretty much for a year and a half now um so pretty much from the from the beginning and um he started developing a version of their seed qr uh, on steel plates um so this steel qr yeah so there's a loads of uh collaboration between him and seed signer and the whole community uh, going backwards and forwards there different uh, prototypes they went through and um, yeah so that was like the end of last year beginning of this year and at that point we knew okay like demand is there for the seedment but also obviously for these plates uh, we really want to get these out to people um, but obviously in the hardware space um, it's all pretty capital intensive logistics in- intensive and so on um so we weren't quite sure how to tackle this um so yeah like for the fast, last few months we've been uh working through different solutions and then at some point uh decided that we'd uh, both be starting our own company and um then just like splitting up the workload um because it's really important to us to to keep like the whole work we've been doing with the rest of the community as well. I mean, it's all based on open source, collaborating and, and working together. And we really wanted to promote that and not lose that by starting a company and then going proprietary. So, um, yeah, we were trying to find ways of doing that. And we now settled on on the solution that he'd be doing manufacturing and uh, further development design. And I'd be doing the whole... Shipping, logistics, product placement and uh, management and so on and customer support and doing all the bells and whistles that go with that. And that suits our strengths both, I think, quite well. And but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we're still working together more. I mean, on paper, we're two companies, but at the end of the day, we're still very, yeah, we're still working uh, in, in a collaboration there. But it's, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's the stage. Very cool. How are you getting around all the shipping and stuff like that? Because these things are presumably very heavy and shipping outside the EU and all that kind of stuff can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Like, have you found a a good way around it? And also with like all the taxes that come with it with international shipping, have you found sort of clever ways around that? Or is it just one of those things you have to suck up the cost? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's the the goal to get that as minimal as possible, especially on the fees. It's 
pretty difficult because the parts that we're selling obviously made of solid steel uh they're not very light so um yeah. like the the weights go up pretty significantly uh, if you buy a few products so especially like global shipping um still is pretty pricey we have now set up a system that it is definitely possible to ship, ship pretty much anywhere and we've all we've got the legal stuff all down as well um and accounting and so on so that's that's all fine, but it's still a work in progress. Um, at the moment, we've still got yeah pretty standard shipping prices. And we're hoping to to get that down with with bulk and also just with different packaging solutions and so on. Get that as small as possible. But I think the one of the most important things, and that's like our priority here and long term vision, is also to just grow like a network of free open source hardware people working in that space. Uh, mm -hmm. to collaborate there and and see i mean there, there are loads of projects that are building different devices physical devices that they want to sell or want to um, distribute and they're all in the same situation as we are some obviously in the us wanting to send to europe and some here wanting to sell to china or to uh, australia or whatever and and um, building some kind of network there and, and growing in that space to get more efficient and and collaborate on that. I think that's something that's really important. And I think it's not out of, out of reach uh, to do. And that would obviously get prices uh, way down. Oh, interesting. So are you thinking like if there are other hardware manufacturers who like Metalwork, for example, that you would have those files available and you'd have some sort of agreement that's like, right, if there's one who's say in the UK and you get an order in the UK, then maybe they produce it and ship it and get a percentage, but it brings everyone's cost down and then vice versa. Is that Absolutely. sort of what you're getting at? Okay. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the ideal situation would be if you can actually like distribute production uh, into different, onto different continents, but also into different countries and jurisdictions, mm -hmm. but also just the logistics themselves so that you could just send over a whole bunch of products in bulk and have them distributed by another company selling other products and then we'd do the same for others and so on. So, um, um mm. yeah, I mean, there, there are loads of, uh, different options there. Um, but I think especially in that, um, in this space working in open source anyway, we don't have to limit that just to design work. We can actually, um, open source a whole, whole bunch of, um, services that we, we do for ourselves anyway, and can, can take up, um, other people into that as well really cool okay and then so when are you going to be having these things available is it going to be once the pod goes out or have we still got a little bit of time to wait like if someone is listening to this and they've gone on to vulcan or gone on to seedman and seen those and the plates and stuff like are they able now to order or what's the score there yeah we've got pretty much everything set which is which is great it's been a long time coming now um we'd hope to be online a bit earlier but the launch date is now tuesday the 12th um of april so as from tomorrow this will be time of recording this will <laughs> be uh yeah we'll, we'll be online and you'll be able to order um so yeah vulcan that's the that's the shop under which we'll be um, selling the products and then we'll have the seed mint and the steel QR as our main products and a whole bunch of tooling and so on uh, to go with it. Yeah, so you can drop that in your cart. But obviously, the, we'll start off with the steel QRs. Um, that's been the main focus um, and the highest demand at the moment. And the seed mints, they'll probably be coming in in about two months or so. Um, okay. So. That's but can people pre-order those or not yet not yet i mean because we're okay. still in negotiations with manufacturers because the first batch we sold uh nick produced them himself uh, in his yeah. free time which was obviously a huge hassle um that was a fuckload of work so that's just not sustainable um especially mm -hmm. if we uh, want to ramp up the amounts there so yeah we're, we're still negotiating with um, a few manufacturers um, and doing prototypes there so that we're I mean we're, we're sure about the the construction itself about the design but just um, so that we can we're sure we got to get the right quality from the the producers mm. and the, the 
the surfaces are all as we'd like to have them and that that's reproducible and once that's fixed then we can we can start with the first batch and then we'll be selling them with a with a shipping time of about three to four weeks probably sometime in may okay cool well it will be I'm hoping to get this pod out tomorrow for when you launch anyway. So um, as someone listens to this, hopefully you should be live anyway. And um, yeah, they just have to wait a little bit for the seedment, but the uh, the other bits will be available. Because it's funny, a lot of people who I've showed, I ordered one with you guys uh, when the first batch came around. And I still yeah. haven't given you a shipping dr- address, actually, um, but <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. But I've showed quite a few people, like, when I'm onboarding them and I'm, like, you know, explaining where well, you write down the seed word. And I always say now, to be honest, you probably want to stamp this into steel, really, because you don't really want it on paper. It's kind of, it's not ideal, especially if you're putting a significant portion of your net worth into this. And then I show them, and even, like, normies who are just getting involved, they're like that's really beautiful. What does it do? And I'm like, yeah, well, this is the way that you would stamp your seed. And I've showed them. And there's been a lot of interest, actually a lot more interest with that than I normally get with any of the hardware stuff, like as in, you know, from showing showing them a hardware wallet or a seed signer or anything like that. They're like, yeah, I don't really care. There's no like real interest for that. Whereas, I don't know, it's just a really beautiful design. I think um, the materials that you've chosen to use are really high quality and yeah the normies seem to like it so it's best you do get that manufacturing sorted and uh, otherwise nick will end up having a heart attack trying to knock them all out (laughs) absolutely yeah i mean that's a testament to to nick and his his eye for like functional design and aesthetics because everything he he does and he he designs it's it's functionality first then like quality and detail and those two things they they just the end result is always something that is aesthetically pleasing and the choice of of materials is is absolutely great and i think that's like the cornerstone of the products of of the seed mint and also the steel qr is just this high quality uh, materials and functional design um and i think i i noticed that personally as well just when you're you're setting up your your seeds for your stack there's so much emotional involvement as well just with the whole space and with with bitcoin itself uh, we've all invested so much time into this and we're all behind this 100 percent. and you want to identify with the materials and the tools you use to secure that in the same way that you do with the with the asset and the network itself um and i think that's something that we yeah, really want to focus on to get that out there. And I think with the steel QR plates, that's a really nice balance that we're trying to trying to walk on here because the seed signer project, I think generally is one of the most important projects in the entire Bitcoin space. And I mm-hmm. really mean that. I, agree. I think it's, yeah. it's done worlds for so many people globally and it unlocks so much potential at such a low cost with parts you can get in any hardware store and 3d printed cases such a community that's so helpful and that ethos is something that we want to yeah we want to to live by too and incorporate into the steel qr so we want to keep it accessible we want to keep it low price but at the same time we want to have it with a high quality and longevity that you can feel confident to, to hold your, your seeds on there long term. Yeah, I mean, Seed Signer is such a great example for other projects to look to and just say like, wow, look what they've achieved and they're an open source project. Um, it just shows what people are capable of when they're working together and it's a great idea. I think people can build on top of it and I can very much see the same happening with what you're doing. And, you know, between those two projects, you basically got things covered. There are other ways to do it, obviously, but um, you can go from zero to hero with those two products, those two businesses, very quickly and easily, and no one has to know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's with now starting these companies as well, um, especially in the in the hardware space, because it's so capital intensive at the beginning to get everything set up, um, that was more or less a necessity that we had to do. 
but keeping all designs and all the work that we do um, and design and collaboration open source is really important to us. Um, so I think, yeah, on that space, I mean, it's it's just been absolutely amazing working with Seed Signer together um, and we'll see where this takes us. But I think also with design of this DLQR itself, I mean, maybe we could uh, touch on that as well, because there are a few things to consider if people uh, want to to get one of these. We do have a few different versions and it's pretty difficult to, to explain in, in a few sentences on our website. So um, I might take the, the chance now to, to just yeah, definitely. Um, explain that. So we have... Or maybe I'll take it one step further back. The steel QRs themselves, it's a steel plate uh, on which to um, stamp your seed in encoded as a QR code. So if anyone has ever used a, a seed signer, you'd know that when you create a seed, you get your seed words, uh, your 12, 12 or 24 seed words. And these seed words can be encoded on your seed signer as a QR code. And this will be shown on your screen of your seed signer, and you can transcribe that onto these plates, first manually with a Sharpie, and then you can stamp the holes with the center punch. So that's the process. Now, the thing is that the amount of data you have to store that drives the size of the QR code. So if you have a 24 word seed, you'll have to store more data than 12 word seed, obviously. So for those two sizes, we've got two different formats. That's the standard 24, which is the well, S24 for, for your 24 word seed, and the S12, the standard 12 for your 12 word seed. Mm -hmm. So these are gonna be, the, the S24 is a 29 by 29 QR code and the S12 is 25 by 25. So the thing is, there are quite a few holes to stamp. <laughs> um, so for anyone who, who um, wants to just envision the process, um, with the S24, you're talking about 350 to 400 punches. Mm -hmm. And with an S12, um, around 250 to 300. Now that sounds overwhelming, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually a lot faster than punching your 24 words words into a steel bar, letter for letter. So those are the two standard formats that we'll be selling. And Seed Signer has developed a compact seed format because in every QR code, there's a whole bunch of data that is the same every time. It's redundant. It's just a part of the standard of the QR code. And ripping all of that out, just the raw data for your seed words left results in a much smaller seed format. Okay. So this would be then 21 times 21. So that would leave you with about 150 to 200 punches. Um, okay. So that'd be a lot less. The disadvantage is that it's not a standardized QR format. So you can't scan it with any other device. So we're still working on that. Um, at the moment, we'll be selling the two standard versions. And we've also got like a demo version um, of the compact format to sell as well. You can buy that. But um, just for anyone just to know, it's good to keep in mind that that is not a standardized format. Okay. And so obviously, I can't see on the website yet. But can you talk about the pricing of the different products? Or do you have bundles or like... If someone's just listening to this and saying, okay, this is the first time I'm actually going to take control of my sats and this sounds like a good way of doing it. What are they going to be buying? What are the options and what are the, what's the pricing? Yeah, so if you, we'll be um, selling, now to start off, we'll be selling these three different steel QR uh, formats and the two standard sizes will, for a single, cost 35 euros per piece mm -hmm. and the smaller version the compact version 21 euros so that's the, like the main pricing um obviously you can we'll be selling them then in a pack of three or six and the prices go down accordingly so so it gets cheaper the more you buy and those are like the standard bundles where you just get the plates mm -hmm. but we've also set up three different bundles the first is the essential bundle 
And that's just a plate or three plates or six plates plus a center punch, either manual or automatic. Mm -hmm. And then we have the extensive bundle, which is then any number of plates you'd like plus both the center punch and or both versions of the center punch, automatic and manual, as well as a anvil um, to, to stamp on. And then the exclusive bundle, that's the the largest, will be one or three or six of each plate plus the center punches and the anvil. Okay. So obviously um, there's something to browse through when you're there and there's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of different um, configurations and options you can uh, jump through in the site. Um, but that's the main product range at the moment. Because presumably, like if I was doing this, I would always want backups on backups so i probably wouldn't even go for one personally like i'd be thinking about oh i'll have three or i'll have six or whatever especially if someone's doing multi-sig and and all these sorts of things so it's quite nice that you have those options absolutely yeah i think i don't envision a lot of people buying one maybe at the beginning they will just to test um, and see, but I think long term we'll probably be um, setting up three as the minimum order. We've also been discussing on uh, whether to sell three six nine or three five ten. Um, that's a bit of a mm-hmm. yeah question of like how what do you gear towards, and it's either I mean obviously. This seed signer itself was built with multi-sig in mind, and the most common multi-sig is a two or three. So that mm-hmm. would mean three plates a minimum. And then next would be a three or five. So that would be then five plates. But yeah. as I don't see too many people at the moment using a three or five. Um, so I think the better use case at the moment is to have either three, just one copy of each, or six, or six, and then just yeah. have redundant plates. That's what I would do. I would have six, and I'd have redundancy. That yeah. seems to make sense in my head. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's really nice. Really, really nice. It's amazing how quickly this has happened as well, because I know it's like, okay, it's a year or whatever, but these things take time if you're doing it properly, and it does feel like yesterday, like we first had the conversation where – but it feels like yesterday that I first even saw a seed mint and we featured it on 21ism and we we're like, fucking hell, this is, this is really cool. And it's like blink and we're here. And it's just amazing for someone who's coming in and, you know, we're always saying, take hold, don't allow your sats to sit on exchange. And with these sort of things, it just feels so much more comfortable to tell people like, go and buy these things. Here's a guide from Q&A or whoever else has written them and get going. Yeah, it's so much more comfortable because I like... Before these things were around, when I was first starting to stamp my seed words, I actually bought, I don't remember where it was, I bought from, it might have been Amazon or something like that, just like steel plates, like whatever they were, like five inch by five inch steel plates. And it was supposed to be, what is it? Is it like 303 or I can't remember what the number is, but like the steel that isn't supposed to corrode, um, like a certain rating on it. And um, I ordered them. I I paid like a reasonable amount of money for them. And then um, I drew my own lines on it and put my own numbers, you know, one to whatever it was. I was doing 12, I think, at the time. And then stamped them by hand, uh, like holding the little stamping kit and then a hammer and like doing it on my kitchen counter. And it took forever to do. And then um, went away and hid them away. And about two months later, I came and like checks i was like i'll just check no one's found these and they started rusting and i was like for fuck sake and i went and double checked and it was definitely advertised as like okay this is the correct type of steel and then i was like well great i've got to do all, all of this again that's really fucking irritating and what a waste of time and money and so just knowing that you've got products that are tested by other bitcoiners and designed by other bitcoiners and they're not going to mug you off it's just so much more comfortable because you know, like if if I'd bought that from you and then two months later it starts rusting, I'm going to be putting it all over Twitter and calling you every name under the sun. And <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to know. And so, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's that, that idea that you know, okay, this is what I'm buying what I should be buying. And this is actually going to, this is actually going to be safe in a fire or 
you know isn't going to rust away and all the rest of it and um you do it once you do it properly and, and that's it yeah it's amazing uh how much uh there is to there's a whole rabbit hole in itself um diving into all the specifications of the different uh alloys even just looking at stainless steel um there's a whole bunch of different stuff uh to consider mm. and um nick's got a wealth of experience on that in that field so so he's a mm-hmm. pro there and knows exactly what he wants he also has the opportunity to actually test um the material when it comes uh, to get them to a laboratory to have them um checked if the alloy is and, the, and all the single components in the alloy actually match what they're supposed to so that's definitely great so we can test that and that's all fine the alloy itself that we've now chosen um, is 316L. I mean, there are a whole bunch of different naming schemes, but I think that's mm-hmm. the most common, or the other is 1.4404. It's one of the highest graded uh, stainless steels with uh, temperature resistance, um, well, like a melting point of over 1,450 degrees so or Celsius. So mm-hmm. that's quite a bit higher than uh, any residential fire. Um, so that's kind of that range. And also, we were also looking at a few other um, alloys, but here, this one, the 316L, is especially um, resistance against uh, corrosion, especially against like chlorine um, and different acids. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously, these are outlier situations i don't see most of these plates coming into a situation where you'd where you'd really need that but the jump is a small one um from from one alloy to the other and and it's not a huge difference in price and work so Mm -hmm. just picking the right one now is definitely important oh definitely i mean for the extra few sats that it costs to upgrade it and make sure that it's resistant to all of that it's well worth it because you know if you do have a residential fire and you've gone for a lower quality material and then you think oh well at least i've stamped it into metal and you go and it's fucking melted and you can't read it and you're like oh that's my net worth gone because my hardware wallets were in there as well and i don't have any other backups so i'm fucked why didn't I spend the extra couple of euros or dollars or pounds just to uh, to go for something higher quality? It just makes no sense. I suppose that should really be the standard because even these fireproof safes, when you actually read and look at the spec, unless you go for a really expensive, really high quality safe, they don't actually stand up to that much. No. And I mean, it's always time based. So it's always like, how long can it can it survive at a certain temperature? Those times are pretty short. Um, So relying and and even if the the safe holds up structurally, the temperature will just rise inside. And if you've got it on something, um, either uh, an electronic device or on paper, or some other less durable uh, material that will just uh, burn up inside anyway. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's one of our priorities was to get this as, as low priced as possible um, so that we can, it's not a huge hurdle for people to get. But the the one compromise that we weren't willing to take is, is to take shortcuts on the material. Um, mm-hmm. We've chosen to take shortcuts then more on the surface finishing and so on, um, not have everything perfectly polished up and not um the most brilliant packaging and and all these kind of stuff um Mm -hmm. we want it to be functional but we want the actual product itself to be the maximum that it can be in longevity um Mm -hmm. and functional quality and all the rest we can build up on um as time goes on as as maybe the quantities that we're getting out there rise the manufacturing costs will go down Mm -hmm. um and then we can also um, lower prices again and get yeah other nice uh features um to accompany them but the base had to be yeah solid material uh and and a and a build quality that's that um does exactly what it's supposed to a lot of what you're doing and what seed sign is doing is around multi-sig 
you obviously have spent a lot of time thinking about this and the ideal setup. Do you have something in your head where hardware wise and and software wise, what you feel is the best mix for most people? Something that you would advise to friends or family? Yeah, this is always the dangerous part. <laughs> Without doxing. Uh, no, no, no. That's not that's not the the deal. It's more giving advice in a if, on something that is so dependent um on on your personal situation but there are a few things to keep in mind generally when you're setting up your multisig there's a bunch and and I'll just uh, in no particular order one of them is definitely to get your threat model defined and in this whole process um I'd advise anyone to really take your time like it doesn't have to be the same day you have to come to a conclusion you can take a week or a month to go over this and rethink these things and document everything write everything down so that you actually have written down the different things you've you've worked through um, so you can recap how you came to a conclusion and I think the the threat model is definitely a big one because there are so many things you can guard against but for most people there are quite a few of those things that aren't the highest priority. So for some people, obviously, depending on the jurisdiction in which you live, um, the threat might be coming from an institution or from the government. In another place, it might be from crime, um, people breaking into your house. Um, In other situations, it might be natural catastrophes of hurricanes or floods. In other places or in other situations, maybe you yourself are the biggest threat and you just want to keep it simple <laughs> um, and just going over complicated um, yeah. will actually be the biggest threat. Mm-hmm. And then obviously there's there's the threat of, of um, someone hacking your devices or maybe you're sharing a flat with change it with a, like a variety of different people um with with that changing up constantly and you, know, you don't really know who to trust or you're you're a nomad and you're you're traveling around the world i mean there, there's so many different scenarios and i think it's really important to define for yourself what is it actually that is the biggest threat to my stack and to base all further decisions off off of that and then obviously there are other considerations that, that come in after that like obviously the cost like how much is your budget how much is how high is the amount you're you're storing that has to be somehow in relation how high is your technical ability and your understanding of the process and the underlying technology and also to what different locations do you have access and so these are all things that factor into that but I th- <laughs> maybe to, to tie this all together again, we've come to a point in, in the community um, and in, in software development and also hardware development that it is very user-friendly by now to set up a multi-sig. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I could have said that confidently one and a half, two years ago. Oh no, definitely not. And the the development has been has been absolutely amazing, um, especially on the on the front of the hardware wallets and seed signer coming out, but especially the coordinators like Sparrow and Spectre. So I think mm-hmm. for a lot of people, just going from a single sig to a multi sig will already bring a huge benefit and a peace of mind. And yeah. I think that's that's step one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been thinking about it for a long time and working out where I am concerned and like what things I'd like to probably use. And like a big one for me is I really don't like the idea of having one hardware manufacturer. So I really like the idea of a mix of, say, seed signer and foundation because I don't want to rely on one. But then what I quite like is where you guys have got this QR scanning capability. So it's like, you know, you can punch punch all the holes and do all of that. So you've got these uh, these plates ready. And I quite like in my head, like something like Sparrow and then having two or three 
and then having yeah the the mix of the hardware wallets and having each plate in a separate location so someone would then have to go to three separate locations scan these before they can spend and have that as like deep cold storage it adds not that much complexity but it adds a lot of security like no one can just turn up at your house and put a gun to your head and say right you need to send me this and like you because you can't actually do it that i quite like and the fact that it is scannable the qr that feels like a much nicer flow to me absolutely um i mean working with the seed signer everyone who's who's done that a few times will know that spending from a wallet uh, with the seed signer is quite the process of uh, typing in the all your 24 seed words with a joystick yeah. So the scanning, having that to scan the QR code is a huge benefit there. Obviously, at the moment, the Seed Signer is the only hardware wallet or signing device that supports that. But we've been hearing some positive feedback also from other manufacturers who might implement that in the future. So we're hoping on that, mm-hmm. that even though these other hardware wallets are... In the traditional sense, hardware wallets that save your seed, um, yeah. that they just also have the capability of scanning a QR code with the seed and forgetting it again afterwards. So you mm-hmm. can use it at the end of the day the same way as you would a seed signer. And if we get to that stage, then I think we'll be another whole step further along so that you can really use these plates, the steel QRs, interchangeably with different manufacturers. Yeah, I like that. Relying on anything, just one thing, uh, freaks me out. You know, even if it's a manufacturer that's been around for a long time and and I have trust in, I still feel a bit funny about it. Even having just one stack or one wallet, I always find funny. Like people always laugh at me because I'm always like, well, I'd never want all my eggs in one basket. They're like, yeah, but it's multi-sig. Like you just have one and you have all your funds in there. And I'm like, no. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that personally. I'd want at least a couple so that if I fuck something up or something goes terribly wrong, then you haven't lost everything. I think some of that just comes down to like my understanding with some things. Like there are holes in my understanding in certain parts where I'm like not a hundred percent confident and I don't fully understand the process from start to finish. So I'm then concerned and i just think well if i don't fully understand it then i can't fully trust it which means i don't want to just have one thing like what are your thoughts around that are you of the opinion where you're thinking well i just have one and i understand that this works and i have to sign with two if i lose one i'm still fine and a two of three or you know and i have redundant i have backups so everything's fine would you feel comfortable having effectively all your eggs in one basket or not really still I think w- what you mentioned beforehand of having of being independent of a manufacturer is a big deal, and I I don't see any manufacturers at the moment where I'd say that I'd think they were malicious. But you never know what can happen, and you never know who's involved in all this process. They're all electronics that go through so many different factories and so many different hands there is always the chance of something funny happening along the way so as you say having redundancy while setting up your multi-seek is a big one but i think for starters just getting to a multi-seek a two or three multi-seek is a step that is the most important step and one that I think you need to make before you can really go on to all the next steps after that. I don't think it's something that you have to get right and perfect the, the first time. Like, don't let the um, perfect be the perfect enemy be the good. enemy of the good. That's the one. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are so many optionalities with all of this, setting that all up, and you you have to be comfortable with the process itself, and you can only do that when you actually use it. So I think as well that it's not a bad idea to upgrade your your setup maybe once a year or so, depending on on your situation. But if you're involved in the community and if you're learning along the way and you want to upgrade, don't be afraid to 
go in steps and then just reshuffle to a new setup um, at some point. That will keep you keep you confident with doing transactions, with using the tools, with um, working with the different devices and softwares, but would also incrementally make your setup safer. That makes sense. And, and also, I suppose, if you set up a multi-sig, I think a lot of it's like time. So like if I set up a multi-sig now, I obviously wouldn't transfer everything over to it because I'd be like, okay, if I fuck it up, then there's a real problem. But I suppose if if I've set it up and then I send in fifty pound or something like that and then I go, right, now let me start this all from fresh and just see that I can actually see that if I was to actually lose this hardware wallet, I can then um fucking hell mate. I lo- I'm losing my brain here. You know what I'm trying to say. If I was to restore <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, my brain's absolutely <laughs> fucking mush today. Um if I was to restore and then know, okay, right, I'm all good, then over time I'd probably feel comfortable sending more in over time and sort of going from single sig to multi sig and, and and at some stage I'd go, okay, now I get this, I feel comfortable. Exactly. You you don't have to like transfer everything each time and go from one to the next. You can have multiple a parallel and just just trickle down um, in steps and push this further down the line. So you've got a maybe a, an old single sig um, and then you set up a single sig with a passphrase and you push a bit in and then go from there to a two or three multi-sig um, and then maybe uh, redistribute your um, seeds to different locations to get that more secure. I think just circling back to the first thing I said on that topic as well, the documentation is something that should not be neglected because I think I've I've heard the argument as well that some people say, yeah, but if I document everything and someone finds the documentation, then they'll know exactly what the whole setup is. And obviously there, there is some truth to that, but I think the risk of not remembering exactly what your setup is, especially if you're uh, going through different setups and, and trying out different solutions or you've just got different stacks for different things. It's so important to be disciplined with actually writing down exactly what you've been doing and then going back, checking your, your backups, taking notes and filing every change you make so that even if you do for some reason leave everything for a few years and come back to it you can you can read up on it or if something god forbid happened to you your loved ones and relatives can fall back on that and go through that Mm -hmm. Um, and i think that just gives a lot of peace of mind and will help you significantly in an emergency situation well i'm really looking forward to this going live tomorrow i'm going to get on and just do a bit of editing and uh, get an intro and an outro done and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm going to try and get it live for tomorrow. Thanks for coming on, mate, and giving me an update. And I look forward to getting one of these in my hand and uh, for people to be able to see them. So just remind everyone where they can go to uh, find your products and get some more info. Yeah, so um, cheers for having me. The um, shop is at Vulcan. 21.com and the same Vulcan 21 on Twitter. The shop will be live tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening sometime, depending on your time zone. But we'll have all the information on Twitter and um, we'll probably have one of the bundles to give away sometime tomorrow Ooh. throughout the day. So maybe maybe <laughs> uh, check that out and keep, keep a lookout for that. And yeah, well, I hope to... So, well, see see where this all takes us but we're really excited and, and yeah looking forward to it nice one mate well uh congrats on pulling this off and uh, i know a lot of hard work's gone into it so it's really good to see that you are at the finish line now and things are going live so yeah congrats it's really cool to see and we will catch up soon